Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the new agent builder templates that are available in our biz chat. So one of the neat things about these templates is to first of all, go ahead and turn them on, take a look at it, play with it, and do some reverse engineering. What I mean is that you can now go into the configuration of these agents and see what are the tips and tricks you can pick up from there. Because when I went and played with these three templates, I already picked up some nice tips I'm gonna share with you. In addition, there is also now the image generator capability that is available in building these agents. So we'll go and turn it on and see how that works. So stick around, there's a lot to learn over here. But first, here's my intro video. In your Microsoft365.com, when you come to your co-pilot and on the right side, you go ahead and see our panel. When you now create an agent, you also see this option saying you can try one of the following templates and there's three of them. So this is the new part. This is something we did not have before, but now we have the templates. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take a look at each and every one of them. And so we can go and get some ideas out of it. So the first one that I want to do is click on this career coach and what it does is immediately gives you a quick description of what this is all about. So it says, okay, you've selected the career coach template, gives you a little information about that and then a whole description. What it also is doing is going ahead and immediately creating the agent's name, this description and instruction. Basically, it actually created the agent for you. So if you didn't already notice on the top over here, the career coach, which is basically the agent name automatically changed. So now what it's saying is let's refine the instructions further. What should be emphasized or avoided in the agent's response? So you can actually give suggestions over here or what we can do is go to configure. And this is something that I already liked because right over here is in the instructions piece is what I really gain more information from. So if I just scroll down just a little bit over here, if I go ahead and expand this all the way, we can actually learn a few things. So right up on the top is the concept of putting in a purpose. Then there is also the goals, overall direction. These three sections, these three categories is what I'm going to leverage for my future agents. Because now I can actually break it down into, okay, what is the purpose of this agent? So I'll literally do this. I'll actually go and say purpose, colon, and then at least give it a one line text. After that, I will go ahead and put in some goals and then the overall direction. Now, in addition to this, you can also go and put in your own content because in your own company, you can go and put in this career coach. However, you might have some HR rules that your employees need to follow. For example, a person cannot switch from one department to the other department unless they have been in the existing department for say six months or nine months. Like each of the companies actually have these type of rules and it's best to actually provide that rule information in your agent as well. And what's the best way to do that? Right away here in your knowledge, you go ahead and put in either your SharePoint site or down to that directly document library level. And I've done a whole video on that. I've put that link in the description below, but I just wanna tell you that that's another possibility to really tweak your career coach for your company standpoint. So the below one, which is the actions coming soon, that is exactly the same. However, the new one under capabilities is the image generator. And if I go and my hover my mouse over that, you'll see create visual aids like images and art in response to your user prompt. So I'll go ahead and turn this on as well and we will do that testing in just a minute. And then in the bottom, the starter prompts, this is the same as it was before. You have six of these prompts automatically and you've got the option to go and change it. Uh, six is the max, you can't go and add any more. However, you have the option to delete any existing ones that you don't need. So even though you can start with six, you can bring it down to any number as you want, all right? I would say at least keep a few available over there so at least people have some ideas to start with. But there you go, we actually have this career coach. I like things as is, so I'm gonna go and click on create because now after just creating the agent, it's actually gonna allow us to go and start using it. And there, I have a few ideas that I wanna test, so we'll go and wait. There, it's done. So now I'm gonna go to my agent and right off the bat, we have selected it right over here. It's the career coach and is giving us some prompts. So I'm gonna go and ask this one. Since I'm considering a career transition, how can I make this change successful? So I'll go and select on that prompt. 
I'll go ahead and click on the next or the enter over here and it is starting to give me some career coach examples. Pretty neat. I can go ahead and double click on any one of these or I can even go and put in one of my own questions. So right away here it says, I'm looking to switch careers. I'm a sales agent, but would like to join the Power Platform low code team. I right, put that in, go ahead and hit enter. Now the career coach is actually going to give me some advice on that. It actually says, this is a great career move. Transitioning from sales agent to a role in the Power Platform low code team can be very rewarding. And now it is giving me this seven steps over here. It's actually pretty neat. It's even going and telling me some hands-on practices is important and other things. But one of the things I wanted to test was that image generator. So I'll go and ask this one. What is an image of a low code team instructor? Go ahead and hit enter. It is going ahead and assessing everything. In addition, here is what it came up with. This is a low code team instructor teaching class about the Power Platform tools for Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI. And now it is using the Microsoft Designer piece and it's going ahead and giving me a preview. And any second now, the image should be generated. And there you go. This is a preview. That's why there's a little bit of a delay. But, but this is awesome because now the image is automatically generated based on the designer all on the conversation we are having. So this is the new feature which we went ahead and turned it on and so far it's pretty neat. I've, I've used designer before directly but I'm so glad that it is now part of the agent experience. So this is the career coach. So I'm going to leave the prompt coach for the end but I want to take a look at the writing coach because it's very similar to the career coach. So I selected the writing coach and now it is going and gave me a description of it and it also went in and changed the actual agent name. It's now calling that as writing coach. Same thing over here. It says, now let's refine the instructions further. What should be emphasized or avoided in the agent's response? This was the exact same thing that we saw in the career coach as well. But what I want to do is now switch over to the configure and once again, take a look at these instructions. So I'm going to expand this as much as I'm allowed to. And now over here, it is giving us based on the skills. On the top, it still gives us an overall description. It says, you are a writing coach. Your role is to provide detailed and constructive feedback on the following piece of writing and assisting with writing tasks. So over here, I picked up a few things. First of all, on the top, if you want to go and give it like a label type of an effect, um, use, using these double asterisks. So there is an asterisk, asterisk, and then skill one, coach me on existing text, and then closing with double asterisk, asterisk, and then also going and using the points over here. Just neat tip. This is like the big one that I picked up from. Same thing, it's going and adding multiple skills. So it goes ahead and puts all of those into that double asterisk, just that it's almost like a label type of an effect, all right? I really like that piece and that's what I picked up over here. And as you can see, we can add up to 8,000 characters. And even by giving all of these six skill level descriptions, we've only consumed 1,840. So over here is a good experience of how to make good use of your instructions. And you can make it really detailed as possible. And in addition to this, if your company already has writing coach instructions, say on a SharePoint site, in a document library with some PDF file, completely fine. Go ahead and use this knowledge piece over here as well so that you can actually drill down to that document library on a specific SharePoint site by using the knowledge piece. And again, I've done a whole video on that, so I'm not emphasizing it over here. And same thing on this side too. It has the image generator piece, but we already demonstrated that before. So this is actually the pretty neat piece over here. I'll go ahead and create it. The agent is successfully created. I'll go to my agent. It is available over here. These are the six prompts. But one of the questions that I'm going to ask is this one. Should I be adding images or GIFs to my writing content? Hit enter. The writing coach is actually going and giving us some suggestions. So right off the bat, it is actually agreeing with me. It says adding images or GIFs to your writing content can be a great way to enhance engagement and convey your messages more effectively. And in addition, it is giving us a few pointers. Visual appeal, emotional connection, clarification, engagement, so on and so forth. And over here, I can actually even say, and as a test, I'm going to go and type this in. So show me an image example that is useful for my writing content. I'll hit enter. I call it a test because I actually haven't turned on that image creator piece. So I was just interested to see what happens. And here it is. It deliberately did not give us our image piece because it respects that we haven't turned this on. So if I go back now to my create an agent, click on this drop down, click on my view, all my agents and in the writing coach, if I click on the pencil, let's go back over here. Let's go ahead and toggle this one on. It is updated. So I'll just click on this update over here. 
Once it is done, we'll go back into our agent and we'll test it over there. Cool, it is updated successfully. Let's go to our agent. And this time I'll immediately just put this text saying, show me an image example that is useful for my writing content. I'll hit enter. Now the writing coach is actually going and doing that and says, here are examples of that image. So I wanted to do this as a test to show to you that yes, it remembers whether you've toggled this feature off and on. And initially it was off, so it only gave us a verbal text description. But now that we turn it on, it's actually giving us this section. So again, it is in preview, the design is in preview, so it takes a few extra seconds. But once it's ready, this is the example that is giving of how writing content can be useful. Pretty neat, right? All right, let's go take a look at the last one. So the last one I want to take a look at is the prompt coach. And in fact, this is something that you should turn this on sooner rather than later just for yourself. So let's go turn it on. And now the agent is being created. It's called as the prompt coach, gives us a description over here, and it immediately went ahead and changed the agent's name, which is prompt coach. Now, again, asking for the same thing is that, do you have any further refinements, which is great. But what I want to do is come now to our configure and in the configure, take a look at these instructions. So this is very similar to the first one that again, it is giving us a purpose, but in these purposes over here, remember there was the asterisk asterisk before in this one, it is all hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. So there are different styles that you can use, but here are some examples. Again, thanks to this reverse engineering by us taking a look at each of them, we can pick up some ideas. So over here now for the prompt code, it is giving us a purpose, it is giving us goals, and then overall direction. Again, very similar to the one that we just saw. But what I like is that now I can leverage all of this and go ahead and start using it to actually learn what I'm gonna do. So it's very neat to actually go and even consider having this just for yourself or for your team, because it really helps to go ahead and first of all, learn how to do some prompting and even take your existing prompts and tweak it to make it a little bit more better. So I don't have anything else to add. I don't have any knowledge. Um, I'll sure I'll go ahead and toggle on the image generator just in case. But what I'm gonna do is actually go and click on create. So it is going and creating my agent. And once that is done, we'll go ahead and do some testing. Agent is done. I'll go and click on go to agent. And here it is. We are in the prompt coach, which is the agent that you and I just created. And in this case, I really like these six examples. The first one I'm gonna leverage is show me three good prompt examples. So I'll go and select that, but I'm gonna tweak it a little bit. I'm gonna say, show me three good prompt examples to send an email on a Friday, giving a summary of all the projects that are active during the week, all right? And now it is giving us some examples. So sure, here are three examples of email prompts you can use to summarize. And it's giving us these examples. Pretty neat because now it's telling us, yes, you can go ahead and break it down based on the project one, two, three, and give these type of descriptions. Another example is the same thing, project X, Y, Z, so on and so forth. So the examples that it's giving is pretty similar, but at least it went ahead and gave us some examples. Here's another one I wanna test. It's a prompt for Power Apps PowerFX function to filter a gallery based on a text field. Let's see what it does. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter over here. And now it's saying, sure, here's a PowerFX function prompt to filter a gallery based on that. There is the filter function, gallery name, text field, and then in column num. It's actually using the PowerFX in. It also went and gave us another example. Is the filter, gallery projects. Now you can use the search box again in. So it's giving us some examples. So the reason I did these two examples is just basically to show that this coach does everything around Microsoft 365 and Power Platform, basically everything in the Microsoft sector. So it's not just tied to your Microsoft 365 apps, Word, Excel, Outlook, and your day-to-day -day applications. No, it actually does a very widespread and getting coaching even for power effects formulas is definitely well within its reach. Now, the one thing that I personally practice when it comes to these templates is definitely learn from them, but be cautious to use them for production use because you might spend more time tweaking it and fixing it as against building one from the scratch. However, that prompt coach is pretty awesome. So that is something that you can turn on and just use for yourself to, to tweak your prompt engineering just a little bit. But other than that, at least go ahead and go into the configuration piece, take a look at these instructions, get some ideas for that, so you can implement that for your own personal agents as well. Hopefully, this video was useful to you. And as always, 
keep using agents in biz chat. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.